Come thou fount of every blessing Tune my heart to sing thy grace Streams of mercy never ceasing Call for songs of loudest praise Teach me some melodious song Sung by flaming tongues above Praise the mount I'm fixed upon it Mount of thy redeeming love Here I raise my Ebenezer Hither by thy help I'm come And I hope by thy good pleasure Safely to arrive at home Jesus saw me when a stranger Wandering from the fold of love He to rescue me from day Interposed his precious blood Yeah Oh, to grace how great a debtor Daily I'm constrained to be Let thy goodness like a fetter Bind my wand I welcome you to our time of worship. I welcome you to the sacrament of Holy Communion. Today we gather at the Holy Table. We're going to eat the bread and drink the cup. We're going to be reminded of the presence of our Lord. It's so good to have you with us. Because brothers and sisters around the community, around the region, around the world, are gathered together at the Holy Table and so in this way, we gather together with them. So I'm so glad that you're at the table with us, where Christ is the head, and we are gathered to eat the feast that is provided for us. So it is my prayer that our time together today, time of sacrament, a time of music, a time of proclamation of the word, a time of sharing, will enrich your life, will strengthen you, and give you courage and strength for the days ahead. But most of all, to remind you that the presence of our Lord is with you at every moment. Let us worship. Let us praise God. Be my breath. Be my voice. Be my hands and be my feet. Be my heart, be my dreams, Lord, be everything to me. Be my breath, be my voice. My hands and be my feet, be my heart, be my dreams, Lord, be everything to me. I can't do this on my own, I lay my life before your throne, I will follow you. Wherever you lead If I lose sight of the path Be the road that 
takes me back Lord be everything to me Be my will Be my way be my faith and be my peace Be my rock Be my strength Lord, be everything to me I can't do this on my own I lay my life before your throne I will follow you Wherever you lead If I lose sight of the path Be the road that takes me back Lord, be everything to me I can't do this on my own I lay my life before your throne I will follow you wherever you If I lose sight of the path, be the road that takes me back. Lord, be everything to me. to the throne of grace. Come praising God for all that God has done and all God is doing. Come giving thanks and praise for the ways in which God has blessed you. But let's also come to intercede. Let's, let's pray for a broken world, for a struggling world, for all those that we know and, and so many that we do not, who stand in need of the intervention of God's grace in order that they might be healthy and whole. Let, let's come before the throne of grace interceding for those that we have named in our hearts, that we have named in our communities as standing in need of, of healing, of the presence of God for the loss of loved ones in their life, for moments where they are seeking new direction. Come, let us pray together. The Lord is my shepherd, I have all I need. I rest in green meadows and beside peaceful streams. He leads me, He restores my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, in His name I take. The paths of the righteous and each step of the way He leads me, He restores. 
restores my soul. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. I will not be afraid, for He is always close beside me. I will not be afraid. The Lord is my shepherd, He's preparing a feast. For me in the presence of my own enemies, He leads me, He restores my soul. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, I will not be afraid. Is always close beside me. I will not be afraid. The Lord is my shepherd, my cup overflows. His love and his goodness follow me where I go. He Today's scripture is John 15, verses 1 through 8. I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Jesus calls us o'er the tumult of our lives, wild restless sea. By day his sweet voice soundeth, saying, Christian, follow me. Jesus calls us from the worship of the vain world's golden store, from each idol that would keep us, saying, Christian, love me our joys and in our sorrows, days of toil and hours of ease. Still he calls in cares and pleasures, Christian love me more than these. Jesus calls us by thy mercies, Savior may we hear thy call. Our hearts to thine obedience serve and love thee best. 
text for today, John 15, 1 to 8, the great parable of Jesus Christ as the vine and we are the branches is set in the midst of a much larger passage of scripture that we find in the Gospel of John. It is chapters 13 all the way through 17. It is a particular section of John's message where he has Jesus seated at table with his disciples. For John, it is the last meal, last supper, if you would. Unlike Matthew and Luke and Mark, who couches this as the last supper and sees that as establishment of the Eucharist, John takes this passage in a whole different kind of way and focuses us in a different kind of way. He sees this as a moment where Jesus is teaching his disciples, teaching them what it means to be his disciples who are going to carry the message of the good news of the gospel into the future. And so he uses this time as teaching, this time of guiding, this time of informing them, this time of helping them to grasp the power of that which is yet to come. So this is a time of table talk, if you would. A time in which Jesus is doing some marvelous and powerful images and messages to all of us. We find in this section of scripture where he speaks about his leaving and that he was going to suffer and he was going to die. And we hear the consternation of the disciples in the midst of that. He talks about betrayal and speaks very clearly that one who is at table with him was going to betray him. It's the moment when Judas is confronted, a great moment when he says, he who puts his hand in a dish with me is going to betray me. Judas is confronted and Judas leaves the scene. It, it's a particular passage where Jesus is reminding Peter that he is going to deny him. And we remember that the great uh, moment when Peter says clearly that is not so, Lord, but we find out that it truly is. He calls them in this time together to be brave for that which is yet to come for a future that is going to be filled with challenges, confrontation, suffering, and also joy. So it's a moment of Jesus kind of laying out for them what the future is all about. It's a time when he is helping them to share what is yet to come and what they're going to face and for them to be courageous it is in the last chapter of this segment, chapter 17, where we are brought to the high moment of, of, of this section, and that's the great prayer of unity. Jesus praying for unity, praying for support for his disciples, praying that, that God would be with them, God would support them, God would care for them. And so we discover in this larger text chapter 13 down through 17, the great theme of unity, of God being present with the Son and the Son being present with the disciples, that whole series of understanding that no one is left alone, but the disciples have the power of God with them through the very presence of Jesus the Christ. And so in the midst of that larger section though, we find this particular passage of scripture, verses 1 through 8 in the 15th chapter, at first glance, it, it almost seems out of place. It's a parable. It's an agricultural parable. A, a moment when Jesus is identifying that God is the vine dresser, the one who is responsible for it all, the one who plants the vineyard, one who is taking care of everything. But Jesus, the Christ, is the vine. That initial 
vine which gives life and sustenance to all of the other vines in the, in the vineyard. And the disciples are indeed the branches of that vine that comes from Christ. And so we get this incredible image of unity made known in an agricultural parable. I am the vine, my father is the vine dresser, you are the, are the uh, disciples, are the branches, and so we see it all coming together in a marvelous, wonderful kind of agricultural metaphor. But Jesus goes on to use that metaphor to talk about other things. One is how it is that, that he will abide with his disciples and they with him. And we discover that the branches and the vine are so dependent upon each other. And Jesus is reminding them throughout this text where the word abide is used or remain is another use that God in Christ will abide with them and be present with them in powerful kind of ways. And so the idea of unity comes up alive again. But there is one part of this passage of scripture that has been troublesome for the church for many disciples for many, many years. A passage that seems very judgmental a moment where uh, the text says so clearly that if the vine doesn't produce fruit, it's going to be cut off, thrown into the pile, and burned. It sounds very much like one being excluded from the, from the community and thrown out. It is one of those images that has spoken for the church for generations about how it is that God prunes the vines, and it's had a very judgmental context. I would like to suggest to you that Jesus has something else in mind. Those who come out of this agricultural world in which we live, where the apple orchards and the peach orchards are so much a part of the life of many, where the pruning of those trees is absolutely essential for providing good fruit. The fruit is, is not going to be delicious. The fruit is not going to be well ripened. The fruit is not going to produce well unless there is a pruning of the tree. And so pruning is a process to make the tree healthier. And I think that's what Jesus has in mind here. Not so much exclusion, but making the tree healthier. And so we can, in our own context, in our own world, we, we can look at a variety of ways in which pruning is designed to make us healthier, make us more productive. I, I see that in a variety of ways. The agricultural imagery is so sharp and clear, and that would have been understood in Jesus' day so profoundly. I think there's an institutional understanding of pruning as well. A time when in the life of our communities, we, we have to take away certain things in order for us to be healthy and whole. We have to move toward discipline in such a way that the whole of the body becomes healthier. For a number of years, I served on the Board of Ordained Ministry of the United Methodist Church. The, the primary task of, of that board was to provide the credentialing for those who are wanting to become fully ordained in the life of the church. It was an awesome responsibility, it was an awesome task because students who came to us had invested years in their educational system. Uh, they had felt a call uh, to ministry uh, they had gone through a process that had brought them this far. And now they had to sit before a board that was going to make the final decision on whether or not they could proceed into fully ordained ministry or not. Sometimes we had to prune. We had to say to them, you need to rethink where you are. And perhaps you need to cut out 
some particular dimension or direction that you're pursuing and move yourself in another way. Sometimes we had to be disciplinarians to help them understand more clearly the awesome responsibility that they were taking on. And so the pruning, the pruning of those moments was a powerfully important part of what we were doing. Sometimes the student, the candidate, would come all the way through the process, having struggled in many ways, only to hear at the end of the day that no, you know, the orders of ordination will not be granted to you. It would not be healthy for the whole of the church. And so there is a pruning that was for the sake of the whole church that was necessary. Anyone who works at institutions knows that there are times when we had to cut things out, take things away, provide discipline, provide direction. And I think that's what Jesus is talking about with his disciples. In order for the body to be healthy and whole, in order for the body to be rich and to produce good fruit, sometimes pruning is necessary. Because the ultimate task that Jesus is bringing to the table at this moment is I want you to be healthy in order that you can provide good fruit, in order that you can help the world to understand the gift of love that I've brought, in order that you might be able to provide fully and completely what is necessary. It's a moment of unity. It's a moment of caring. It's a moment of providing support. So in the context of unity, we come to the table. We come to the holy table, the sacrament of holy communion today with this interesting passage surrounding us. At first glance, it doesn't seem to be appropriate for the sacrament of Holy Communion. But I suggest to you it is precisely what we need. For John is painting for us this picture where Jesus is teaching, where Jesus is sharing as he's sitting at the head of the table, where he's invited his disciples. And Jesus has invited us to that table today as well. Jesus is sitting at the head of our table. Jesus is teaching us. Jesus is reminding us of what it means to be disciples. Jesus is telling us, I am the vine and you are the branches. Jesus is telling us in this whole message that in the midst of life, we are to stay unified with him connected to him and that is the source of our salvation that's the source of our capacity to produce good fruits is to stay in unity with Christ I'm the vine and you're the branches and only as a branch that attaches oneself to the Christ and attaching oneself to the Christ is the most important message of all attaching oneself completely and wholly Christ, where it is Christ, Christ alone, Christ as the center of your life, Christ as your primary relationship, Christ as the source of, of your capacity to do good things in the world, Christ, the capacity for you to share life and to share it in all of its abundance. We need to understand that we don't get all of our nourishment from the church, though that is important and there is much that we get here. But it is in our relationship to Christ where we find our power, where we find our strength, where we find our joy. We don't find our connection to Christ or connection to the church as just a source of, of participation in the midst of the world, but as a way to understand how Christ nurtures us and how Christ supports us. <coughs> so I invite you to come to the table today. And I invite you to come with that song in your heart, Christ alone, Christ alone. We come knowing that it is Christ who's at the head of the table, Christ who is the vine, Christ, who invites us as the branches, come, and eat, share, be a part. He's invited us to this holy meal. 
reminding us that he calls us to unity with him. So let's be present with him as we eat the bread, drink the cup, and say Christ, Christ alone. send his son Jesus Christ our Lord to live with us heal us teach us die for us rise again for us so I invite you to come come to this holy table and in this place receive the blessing and the grace of God but let us come first confessing our sin let us pray together Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have made idols of our desires, our perceived righteousness, and even our fears. 
We have failed to be an obedient church. We have failed to embrace one another as equally valued members of one body, of which Christ alone is the head. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have been lured into legalism in the confines of church polity, favoring human security over divine, radical grace. We have rebelled against your love, believing that your favor is earned by faithfulness rather than freely given to us and every sibling in Christ. We have not loved our neighbors when we valued certain voices, perspectives, and bodies above others. And we have not heard the cry of the needy when we overlooked the hungry, the poor, and the outcast, when we turned our backs on the one who was lost, when we chose for ourselves who was welcome at your feast. Even when we fail to seek forgiveness and have not yet forgiven one another, forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Christ our Redeemer. Amen. I invite you that as you come to this holy table, that you would come with a piece of bread or a cracker and a beverage that you can share so that at the moment that we eat and drink, that you can eat and drink with us as sign and symbol of our being present. Let us pray together. Almighty and most gracious God, who has given us the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who has come among us to teach, to heal, and to die, to rise again, we come as the most blessed of people. And now we come remembering that night that he gathered with his disciples. He took bread and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, eat this and remember me. Also, he took the cup and he passed it to each of his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you, for this is a new covenant that I give to you. So we come as the most blessed people. And as we come, we would ask that you would pour out a blessing upon this bread, this bread which is the gift of God, made known to us by all those who have produced it for us. The farmer who grew the wheat, the, the miller who milled the flour, the baker who baked the bread. Give you thanks for that. And may it now become sign and symbol of your life and love among us. We ask now your blessing to be upon this cup, that it might be for us the gift of new life, the new covenant. We give you thanks for those who grew the grapes and who shared the juice and who shared it with us. May your blessing be upon it and be upon us. All this we would ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I would remind you that on the night that Jesus gathered with his disciples, he took bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body which has been broken for you. Every time that you eat this, do so and remember me. After supper, he took a cup and he passed it to each one of his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. For this is a new covenant that I give to you. Drink this and be thankful. Brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, these are the gifts of God and they are offered to each one of you, the people of God. And so I ask now that you take a piece of bread. For this is the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Eat this and remember. I ask you now to take the cup. This is the new covenant given to you. Drink this and be thankful. Let us pray. Almighty and most gracious God, we give you thanks for these signs and symbols of new life. Stir in us your grace. Remind us of your love. 
Empower us with your spirit that we might go forth praising you through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. time that we come to worship, we come receiving the gifts of God. Today has been special because we have received the gifts of bread and cup, the very presence of God among us. So we come always being blessed. I invite you now to give your offerings, share your resources, share your tithes, in order that the ministries of the church might continue both our churches in this place, but churches around the world. Today we ask for a special offering as well for the Board of Child Care. Board of Child Care is a ministry of the United Methodist Church located at Falling Waters, not too far from here, providing respite and care for boys and girls who have been found in trouble in so many places in their lives. It's a place of grace. It's a praise place of love. So we ask that you would uh, give your offerings in a special way. Simply memo on your check, Board of Child Care or BCC, and we will be sure that they get 100% of what you give. 
because it is a ministry that indeed is redeeming the children of God in a wonderful kind of way. So we invite you to give, to give generously. I'm so glad you have been with us today. It's been a joy to have you worship with us, share the Holy Sacrament with us, gather together in music and praise. It's been a joy and a blessing. It is our hope that you too will have been blessed and you'll feel the presence of our Lord upon you in all those particular ways in which God reaches out into your life. And now, I pray that you'll go forth in the name of God who has created you, blessed you. Go forth in the name of the Son who has redeemed and transformed you. Go forth in the name of the Holy Spirit that abides with you, continues to share God's love with you. Go in the name of God, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and go in joy. Oh